Well, hey, more of them showed up once than uh, I thought. I got one here from White Mountain Knives, and I got me some uh, some other little yellow envelopes. I think the first thing I want to do is probably move this out of the way. This is some nano cord that I have with uh, some abrasive to try to sharpen uh, a uh, really, really tiny seam ripper for a uh, roommate slash friend slash friend's wife. <clears throat> And uh, that one's really, really small. But, all right, let's go ahead and, um, I don't know, I'll go with the uh, the White Mountain Knives one first. My address is on the other side, so I'll just go ahead and uh, cut it, cut the tape open off screen. Uh, I suppose for my unboxing, it's a little overkill, but the uh, the Kaiser Bag Lighter XL, the, uh, the first edition one from um, White Mountain Knives that I attempted to dye purple, and it just kind of looks a bit like tree bark, but that's okay. I still like it. Tell you what, it's a hefty chunk of uh, 154cm, that is for sure. All right, and yeah, okay, this is uh, the best tech. I think it's the best tech Swift. I believe that's what it was. Yeah, it's a little beat up and worse for wear. Uh, yeah, this thing was sold stupid stupid cheap i think i got it for like 30 bucks um it said it had some chips on the blade and sure enough it do and they're not too bad either i can easily end up sharpening that out so hooray i get a uh, a nice best tech for uh 30 bucks yeah definitely not in a uh, resellable condition but uh, that's why it was marked down uh, quite a bit not that the uh, the Swift here was a uh, super, super um, expensive knife, but uh, yeah, when I saw it available for the price, I figured I'd pull the trigger on it because most of the time I end up reprofiling and resharpening anyway. And if the chips weren't, you know, ridiculously large, well, there we go. My carta seems uh, pretty nice on it. Um, Fairly high polish, so it's got a little bit more of that uh, dried Play-Doh kind of feel to it. We got that swedge up top here that reminds me of um, that new itty bitty uh, green Tucson that uh, me and a whole bunch of other people have uh, got recently, where it's a little bit thinner at the spine. Yeah, it's not too bad. Very neutral handle going on there. G10 on the back spacer. Yeah, that certainly makes sense, especially for the. Uh, Price point they're going for for that. Pocket clip's got a little bit of flux to it, but uh, it's not too bad. And uh, yeah, it sticks out far enough that it uh, doesn't really bother me too much in the hand, uh, even though it's a deep carry pocket clip, which uh, more often than not does end up uh, annoying me. Yeah, we got some nice lock bar access going on there as well. Had a very, very gradual plunge grind, but a... Uh, a decently nice eh, finger slash sharpening choil for it, so yeah, not too bad. This is just D two, nothing too special. Looks like it's um uh bead blasted on the uh, the flats, and then we have a uh, the uh, the satin finish for the uh, the other grinds there. A lot of times that'll make action suffer, but it seems like they did a pretty good job. This thing's. Pretty close to a drop shot, so yeah, that's a pretty good buy for 30 bucks once I, you know, actually fix it up. All right, let's go ahead and uh, pop some things out here. Looks like I have a six leaf. And a Tucson. And another Tucson. All right, well, I'm curious about the uh, the six leaf here. I don't quite remember exactly which one this was. Okay, well, I know what it is now. And uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty interesting. I thought this one was still a ways out. This is the, uh, what, the 21? Yeah, the SL21. We got a titanium frame lock here with uh they essentially anodized it um then masked off a little bit of area and then uh did their uh coating of whatever the heck it is that's a fairly interesting clip here uh i do like to see them um 
using 154 cm, even though they put a dash in there, which uh, I don't think is officially on the uh, the Crucible naming convention for it, but that's okay. This is uh, very much one of those um, sheep's foot, almost clear kind of things. It's got a little notch out the top there, which uh, to me has just a little bit of an homage or whatever to, um, uh, oh, the sheepdog knives. That uh, they've even incorporated into their uh, chef's knives, which isn't super useful. And unless you got really, really long fingers like me, you're not going to be able to use that as a uh, as an index point. But uh, overall, super, super good. Plunge grind's done pretty darn good with that uh, sharpening choil coming out there. Uh, I will say. This one I got from uh, from Amazon. Oh, it's a front flipper as well. I guess I should give that a shot. Yeah, it's got that uh, front and black um, flipper kind of uh, trouble that uh, you really have to do a uh, quick light switch on it. Just takes a little bit of getting used to for a particular knife. Anyway, I was saying... Um, this one I got from Amazon. Uh, it wasn't super, super cheap. Uh, I think it was about 90 bucks, Somewhere right around there. Um, I will say, last night I did actually win one off of uh, eBay for like 50 So uh, that's not bad. It wasn't uh, purple, though. It was gold. So I know they've done uh, a few different colors. I think they also did a green one or something like that. But uh, pretty interesting. It's got a swedge up top there, but uh, yeah, we're still a fairly thick blade stock going on there. Probably 3.8 or something like that. But yeah, this thing comes down to a really, really thin edge. Love to see that. And it might just be me, but it looks like there might be just a little tiny bit of a curve to it. No, it's just me. Well, what kind of uh, blade length are we working with here? Yeah, about three and a quarter. Yeah, somewhere right around three and a quarter, given the uh, little extra at the end there. We don't really have any lock bar access, though. That's probably the one thing that uh, might make a couple of people just a little bit sad. We have some uh, crosshatch um, micro milling going on on the, uh, the bottom portions there, though. Just gives you a little bit of extra friction. Yeah, it's a super nice knife. I do like it. I hope they've uh, done a pretty good job with the 154CM. It's uh, not a really difficult uh, blade steel to uh, be able to heat treat, but I have seen uh, some companies kind of not do a great job on it, like uh, QSP with their, um, their Gannet. At least my particular copy really didn't perform super, super well. <laughs> All right, this one is definitely a long design. This is the, the 151? Yeah, 151. And... I hadn't really paid attention exactly on how to... Oh, it's got a button to keep it closed. Interesting. There we go. This knife, he uh, essentially ended up designing... Um, from uh, looking at his cat's claw at one point there. Uh, this is the... Well, it's gone forever. <laughs> Hold on one moment. So as you can see there, uh, this is the color variant, and because of that, it doesn't have a uh, the bead blast finish that... Uh, Tucson's other titanium has, and that makes them a little bit more slippery, but this one did feel a little bit more um, fancy and definitely weird and out there, so uh, I wanted to get the, uh, the little color version of it. Uh, the blade steel, I think, is still, that's uh, 14C28N, neat. And that is <laughs> a wicked amount of recurve on there. Uh, this is not a knife you're going to be ending up uh, sharpening on a standard stone. Um, they definitely sharpen it at the factory with uh, belts, as you know most companies end up doing. And uh, yeah, it looks like they just had a little tiny bit of problems getting it uh, super even, which I will probably as well. So that's uh, fairly interesting. 
I honestly didn't know that this thing had a lock on it. I thought it was just kind of a uh, little slide it in and slide it out. So, yeah, this thing is uh, super neat. If you uh, were looking at that little O-knife uh, disc knife but thought, man, that thing is way too small and convenient, well, then uh, I got the knife for you. <laughs> Yeah, that's a it's a super cool uh, idea. Uh, something that um, a lot of companies really wouldn't uh, pull the trigger on. Um, CKRT certainly would. They've always done a lot of weird knives with like the uh, the Van Hoy knives and stuff like that. Uh, so that's pretty cool. All right, and then this guy, which uh, ended up taking a long time to end up getting to me. Whereas I think I ordered it along with uh, quite a few other people. And I've already seen them um, having it open and uh, enjoying them. Uh, the pocket clip, as you can see, um, is going to allude to this being a Keanu knife. Like the uh, the 390 and then the, uh, the button lock one that's uh, super, super good. This one in particular is, of course, the uh, the color variant as well. They, they do a... Uh, a standard bead blast finish on it um, as a different one of it. Uh, D2 blade. Looks like I got number 24. Hooray. Yeah, just like that button lock. Super, super nice and thin blade geometry. Nice full flat grind. Still a little thick up top. You know, it's a standard Tucson, so they're going to uh, do that a little bit thicker. And then we got some uh, carbon fiber inserts here. You know, I can feel just, uh, well, it's mostly a textural uh, thing between the uh, the carbon fiber and this little cross beam here. So they have a, a pretty decent uh, fit up going on there. Not absolutely perfect, but hey, what are you going to do? This knife is under 100 bucks. <laughs> uh, and this is another one of those uh, nested uh, liner uh, knives, even though we got uh, titanium handles on there. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, um, and certainly can help with, uh, you know, reverse flicking and stuff like that, because you can't really put pressure on that lock bar, and it still has all the titanium backing it up and stuff like that, so I don't necessarily mind that. Uh, looks like, on the inside here, we do have um, some weight reduction going on on the inside, so that's pretty good. I can see the, uh, the little holes on the inside there so the carbon fiber on this particular knife is adhered in place so unless you really want to uh, heat this thing up quite a bit and uh, push them out that way uh, these things aren't going to be um, coming out but uh, well at least this one in particular is already anodized so I don't really have any worries about that um, and I, I really haven't had any trouble with, um, other ones, uh, with adhered, uh, scales rather than, uh, them just being standardly attached with, uh, T6 screws or something like that. So it seems like it's, uh, pretty darn good. Really love the plunge grind on that. It's way back there. Uh, and then slants a little bit forward. It reminds me mostly of a lot of, um, uh, crossbar locks, uh, where they'll, they'll end up having that same kind of a slant to it, mostly to uh, end up pushing a little bit of that blade out to uh, help with the uh, centrifugal force of, um, you know, just flicking it out. I'm looking for my uh, Benchmade 940. It's, uh, it seems to have uh, grown legs and walked. There we go. Just a little bit further away. So yeah, that, that same kind of thing coming up here. Uh, but this is a little bit before companies ended up uh, putting a little bit more of that slant to, uh, as you pull that back, it would uh, dislodge the uh, the knife a little bit to uh, help it overcome that, uh, for lack of a better term, detent. So, yeah, I do like... Uh, do like everything I've got today, so that's pretty darn good. This one is uh, pretty interesting. Uh, I still don't know necessarily if um, Six Leaf and uh, Tucson have much in the way of affiliation uh, outside of 
Um, of course, the uh, the designer Rattlesnake, who did some for Tucson and uh, has basically moved on to do all of his designs through uh, Six Leaf, and then uh, some through Mossinary as well. But if they are using 154 cm and uh, you know they are colluding a little bit and or you know possibly uh, in the same facility or uh, around the same block or something like that. Hopefully that might uh, rub off onto Tucson because, uh, you know, D2 is a fairly decent steel, but I do like to see something that's a little bit stainless. And uh, they do have uh, quite quite an ordeal of getting enough uh, 14C28N to have that be their standard blade steel like it was in the past. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I still don't know. Um, I'm, I know that Tucson makes a heck of a lot more knives. Um you know, just in quantity than uh, Six Leaf does. And, uh, you know, of course, 154 CM being a an American blade steel, well, they have to pay those tariffs and stuff like that, which is probably they've kind of shied away from it uh, for the most part. Um, and why they do only a very, very limited amount of uh, S90V. Uh, I guess the, uh, the new versions of the... Uh, TS-162, that weird uh, bulbous banana shape kind of one, um, is in uh, M390 rather than S90V. So I'm glad I picked mine up when I did because, uh, you know, I have much less uh, S90V, and that one uh, certainly was uh, treated very, very well. So. Hooray. But, yeah, there's the uh, the four knives that I ended up uh, getting today. We got the 151 little cat claw guy from Wong. We got the Best Tech Swift. Uh, I honestly don't know if this is, um, yeah, it's just an internal design to uh, Best Tech. We got the Six Leaf uh, SL21. And this one in particular has purple trim, but like I said, they also have gold and uh, green. And then, oh, what's the number on this one? 396. Really neutral handle on there. Super flat on the end, but uh, just like the, uh, the button lock, this thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. The, uh, the part of the clip in the back sticks out a little bit because otherwise you could stand this thing directly up and it would sit there, kind of like the Spyderco Watu. But, uh, yeah, this also has, um, I guess, uh, as an aside, uh, they do have uh, the twill inserts going on here, but um, <clears throat> they've cut them uh, slightly off-center, so uh, you can see they... Uh, they don't look like a uh, perfect little checkerboard thing. And uh, I think that's probably a good thing because mostly the uh, the absolute perfect twills um, these days look much, much more like uh, the uh, little carbon fiber laminates on top of G10 that are, uh, you know, manufactured specifically for that. So this does give a, just a little bit more authenticity to the, the carbon fiber they use, so... All right, well, that's uh, everything that I got going on here. A whole bunch of uh, interesting knives. As always, I appreciate y'all for watching, and have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, yo. Subscribe. Well, here we are. Okay. <laughs> I have uh, a couple of uh, knives coming in here. But this one uh, was super, super interesting to me, so I ended up uh, picking it up. As you can see, this one actually came from Amazon. A stupid little arrow smile or whatever. I suppose for an unboxing knife, we'll use a Civivi Clavi. It's a super tiny little knife. And <laughs> it's a Kaiser. It's a Raven series. This is a, a knife. Of course it's a knife. It's a kitchen knife. <laughs> Trying to... Uh, right, there we go. Just pull the uh, stuff off of here. Alright. I think this slides out. Yeah, it slides out. Okay, this is well, supposedly kind of an 8-inch chef's knife. At least that's what they have it uh, labeled as. But uh, it is a little bit different. All right, we got a few things going on here. Here we are. <clears throat> yeah, 
And as you can see from this, uh, it's, yeah, they're going to call it a Japanese chef's knife. This is a, what they call a, a kiritsuke or kiritsuke. Wouldn't you, I don't know. I don't really speak Japanese or pretend I know uh, pronunciations, but I think that's probably a little bit more uh, close to it. Um, interesting. We got uh, G10 handles here with a little mosaic pen. Yep, both sides of it. We got uh, whatever that says. Most likely Kaiser or something kind of like that. But uh, yeah, this has a, a particular type of steel I've never really heard of before. It's called TCO. And uh, I'm not even honestly sure if it's actually called TCO 69 or if it's just referring to the 69 layers of, uh, you know, other softer steel going on on the, uh, on the top there. But yeah, I really wanted to uh, check this thing out. Um, I think... This thing originally, I don't think this is brand, brand new. Um, I think this was a Mojave outdoor kind of thing for quite a while. But obviously, see, I got it off Amazon. Um, yeah, that handle is uh, fairly heavy on there. So the, uh, the balance point is basically right at that bolster there. Um, this is kind of an interesting sort of thing. Yeah, we have a little bit... Uh, Thicker blade than you would get on a uh, a standard one of those. So, pretty interesting. I'll have to uh, see a little bit more about how the uh, the TCO uh, blade steel ends up working out. Uh, I honestly can't find almost any information on it uh, thus far. Uh, generally looking for that kind of steel, you end up with this particular knife being referenced and or one or two uh things that talk just a little tiny bit about the steel but not really in any meaningful way or uh comparison wise or any of that sort of stuff so yeah it's uh we'll have to see how that works i guess we have uh sure we got a little card for uh texas steak and eggs weird <laughs> but all right. weird folks, but all right, all right. Yeah, they do say that it's a uh, HRC sixty plus or minus two. It would be interesting if it was actually um, uh, closer to sixty two. Uh, of course, you really got to be careful. You can't use that as uh, a full European chef's knife, like that. Hacking at bones or uh, frozen food or something like that. Real dangerous if that's uh, really where you're that hard. Hey, you got some information here. TCO 69 Damascus steel is made of high quality steel with 69 layers. The steel core is TCO, the thickness is uh, 0.85 millimeters, and the chemical composition is close to VG10. Okay. The interior core of steel is painstakingly sandwiched between 68 layers. The thickness of the outer sandwich layer, 34 layers, is uh, 0.8 of a millimeter. Total thickness, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, interesting. Uh, this thing wasn't um, incredibly expensive, which is why I, I certainly pulled the trigger on it. Uh, I don't remember exactly. I think it was somewhere around 70, 75 bucks or something like that. Which, uh, you know, that uh, puts it kind of right in the uh, the range of um, what a lot of the uh, the different uh, Tucson models end up going for, especially their, uh, their Damascus steel, um, Kind of a little bit more upscale sort of things going on there. So, pretty, pretty interesting overall. Um, Kaiser, of course, uh, does a different um, chef's knife series uh, that they just recently started doing. And they are basically a sheepdog. So, uh, well, that's, you know, the uh, name of a particular knife, but also of... Um, the designing company and all that sort of stuff for them. Uh, and those were kind of interesting, but uh, this felt just a little bit different. And I kind of wanted to uh, give another uh, K-tip um, style knife uh, a try after um, trying and not being a uh, incredibly huge fan of one that I got from uh, Tucson quite a while back. It was uh, much more traditionally Japanese. Which, uh, yeah, it's 
It's good and uh, different. <laughs> we'll say that. But uh, all right, yep. Yeah, we'll go ahead and set that aside for uh, playing around with in the kitchen later on. Okay, now for a couple of folders here. Let's go back to the uh, Svivi Clavi and uh, unzip these little sons again. And yeah, a couple of T-sons here. <clears throat> I think this is 295. It's uh, got a little bit of a lubrication on it. So I'll go ahead and deal with that. All right, yeah, this is the uh, 295. So this kind of uh, is the last one to really round out um, the whole Raihi set, I think, from like 291 to uh, uh, 299, 298, something, I don't know exactly. But yeah, interesting. Um, this one has that same kind of pocket clip uh, that that last one that I looked at had. Maybe just a little bit easier to get in and out of the pocket, but uh, still, not exactly my favorite. <clears throat> Sing, obviously, Tonto, and uh, we do have a um, compound grind here, super, super thick at the tip, and then we do have a, uh, a bit of a uh, hollow grind here, not an incredibly... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Not an incredibly uh, deep um, hollow grind, but uh, still quite quite nice. And because of that, we also have the uh, saber grind going on here. This is also a uh, titanium scaled steel liner lock. They've done that on some recently. It's a strange decision, I think, usually on their part. Um, but, I mean, it does look a lot cleaner from... Um, from the outside so I can certainly uh, understand and respect that and uh, yeah really interesting it's uh, fairly clean we don't have uh, additional screws and stuff like that going on there flipper tab works good detent seems to be fine handle is a uh, very very neutral we have all of <laughs> the uh, the lock bar access in the known universe right there. So, uh, you yeah, know, that'll be great, especially for people with gloves. So that's pretty interesting. Decent action, but, uh, of course, that also has to do with this being a uh, massive chunk of steel. And it's D2. Yep, that's uh, it's kind of their MO for the last, uh, I don't know, year, 14 months, somewhere right around there. All right, and what do we have here? Oh, I was super excited for this one here. This is a night morning design. As you can see, it's using a crossbar lock. It's kind of their first take on it. Uh, it does have night morning's branding, which means I assume it's got Tucson on the Yeah. Just like the, uh, the TS-49 uh, that they've done in the past there. That's not going to bother me. And, uh, hey, it doesn't have, you know, a whole bunch of extra information. So hopefully it doesn't bother a whole bunch of people all that much. But, uh, yeah, let's flip it on open. This is the Stonewash Finish one, uh, which I have seen and purchased this from, uh, from Amazon. But uh, they also do have uh, a black-coated blade, which is the one that I've uh, basically only seen um, on, on eBay thus far. But... Uh, yeah, between the two of them, uh, I, I was definitely going to appreciate the uh, stone wash a little bit more. So TS-375, we got D2 steel. We got uh, fairly high polished micarta going on there. I do actually like that um, uh, kind of color combination quite a bit. It does have kind of a uh, nice warm look to it, so that's definitely appreciated there. Pocket clip looks pretty good. We got a nice flat area there with some ramp I'm gonna be super curious um, 
into how they actually have this thing kind of put together usually and yeah I, I do see some um some small scale uh, sort of things uh, mounted into the uh, the titanium there but uh yeah i'm used to a little bit different so this thing is constructed uh, a bit different than uh, most other access locks out there where you can usually remove the outer scales and you have the, uh, the liner on the inside there. This one looks to be just a little bit different to that where you can't really access those, um, what I'm assuming are Omega Springs because it's basically like everything else there. Yeah, a lot of times with access locks and this one's no different, um, it does take a little bit of uh, breaking in uh, this one seems to, uh, you yeah, know, it's, the action on it's not super great, but it's usually uh, riding along the back there that uh, does need a bit more uh, lubrication and all that sort of stuff. So I will uh, see what I can do with this thing in particular to uh, improve some action a little bit. It's got night mornings kind of... Um, Thumb studs there, they do stick out proud of the uh, the scales. So, super easy to access. Really neutral handle. I'm really liking the blade shape. Jimping is uh, exactly where I would want this. And, of course, the thumb stud eh, maybe just kind of comes out to uh, uh, the very end of the blade there. But we do have a nice choil. It's, uh, it's nice and gradual, but it does stop. And then we have... Uh, quite a bit of height before it even gets to the blade there. Decently uh, thin blade geometry going on there. Yeah, I am really, really enjoying this. It feels solid. It does have just a little bit of a up and down blade play, which, uh, hey, that happens with a lot of access locks. Um, I'm certainly not the only one to uh, mention it. I suppose... Um, David C. Henderson over at the, uh, the Knife Center just kind of mentioned that in a, uh, a video recently that uh, it is at least a, uh, a little bit of a uh, common problem there. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't really have any worries or problems. Uh, you can fully see the, um, the, uh, the whole actuation there. You see, there's no way that that thing's going to slip off like a uh, like a button lock that's not fully deploying or something like that. And, yeah, the access lock works great, even if you are trying to use it with one hand. Like I said, the action I do need to uh, work a little bit on. But, uh, overall, I am damned impressed with their uh, their first foray into the, uh, into the whole crossbar access clutch log, whatever the hell you, uh, you end up wanting to call it. I don't, I don't think they particularly, you're going to have any special name that they end up coming up with for the lock. Like, uh, basically all the other companies do, but, uh, yeah, this thing is really, really good. That's, uh, even a little bit more, <laughs> a little bit more better than, uh, I, uh, I had anticipated. Uh, yeah, this thing really excites me. Uh, so freaking awesome. All right, well, I put the, uh, the Kiritsuki away, but we got the uh, TS-295 to kind of round out that whole um, chunk of numbers for Raihis, um stuff right there. Really interesting Tonto, uh, especially with this um, kind of saber grind with the hollow and the really, really thick tip. Uh, this really feels much more of a, a tactical piece, I think, than possibly like an EDC. You can certainly do a lot of EDC stuff with it, but uh, just how thick that tip is really makes me think that this thing's really good at punching holes in things. Whether it be, I don't know, whatever you particularly uh, prefer or need to use it for. But, all right, well, that should uh, do it here. Uh, I do think I have some more that are um, coming in the next few days. I say next few days, it could be tomorrow, it could be the day after, but uh, I'm heading on the way to Louisiana for uh, my company's Christmas party, so uh, I will be out for probably four or five days, so I'll find out what I get when I get back. 
But uh, as always, I appreciate y'all for watching and have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, yo. Subscribe. Well, I've now taken apart the TS-375 and uh, I am... Um, uh, I was wrong in the earlier video. It is basically set up uh, quite a bit like um, Benchmade uh, 940 here where we have... Uh, back end of a uh, little uh, inset scales going on in here and a little bit of a uh, attachment here same sort of thing going on here these ones are a little bit shorter so much more like uh, the benchmade bug out uh, these pieces are steel even though they do have that uh, kind of sandblast look to them like uh, like the other bits of the titanium we can definitely see that uh, this had multiple different layers of machining we had uh, of course one for uh, the start of the pocket and uh, this guy over here for the lanyard hole and then a uh, second one there uh, all the way through and then of course on the outside here for the micarta that also kind of uh, covers up the uh, the end of the uh, omega springs uh, this thing does have one single screw going into micarta not exactly the thing that i like to see this one is fairly deep however though and uh, even without the the screw and everything in there, it does feel um, quite a bit more sturdy, probably because of a, a heck of a lot larger surface area going on there. So yeah, I got, we got the uh, the standard Omega Springs going on here in the uh, lock bar. Uh, I'm going to uh, basically slap in some uh, skiff bearings instead of. Uh, these guys, because, well, it's open, and uh, why not? These guys have uh, 13 balls instead of uh, 8 that the uh, the nylon ones end up doing. These are the uh, the quarter-inch pivots, because that's what um, is compatible with uh, Tucson. But uh, I do think also the 6mm uh, ones might work as well. Maybe just a little tiny bit. Uh, smaller as far as the pivot goes, but, uh, I don't know. I haven't actually tried to slap them in there, but, uh, yeah, all right. So this thing is, uh, constructed, uh, quite a bit like, uh, most other, um, crossbar locks out there. I, was, I hope that was, uh, at least somewhat, uh, interesting to somebody else besides me. Just wanting to, uh, take this apart and look at it. So, uh, there we go. Catch you later. Oh boy, I got things in the mail. Um, I just spent 25 hours in, uh, in airports. Uh, I'm absolutely exhausted, but I am interested to uh, open these guys up before I go back and try and finish out my work day and then absolutely just crash. But, uh, all right, yep, yeah, I don't really have anything super imaginative, so I'm going to use the, uh, the TS-375 that you saw in a little bit earlier portion here. Action never really got uh, incredibly better, even after um, changing it out with um, uh, skiff bearings. But, uh, I mean, not that those usually end up actually improving um, action, and they even state that. So, you know, it's not like it was something I was expecting. But, uh, okay, here's a petrified fish. Let's see, what do we got in uh, this one here? This one comes in black box, <laughs> which I suppose a lot of uh, companies end up doing. If I remember right, this is from a uh, a uh, company on Amazon called Masalong, which I'm assuming they uh, are just um, uh, reselling or um, rebranding some uh, some different knives and this was the only one out of the uh, i don't know probably 60 or so that they make and i thought it looked kind of interesting so i'll go ahead and do that this one was the uh, the bros gold i'm assuming is from olight because uh, the last one i got from was hey i was right i got some things and some stuff and hey there we go well that kind of Spoils that one, but I got the metal here. And then uh, I got some stuff from uh, White Mountain Knives.
I think I have uh, another one or two on the way from these guys. But uh, that's not going to be this one. Uh, okay. This is just a Trevisa. Alrighty. Uh, and I got basically two little envelope things here, but this is um, uh, 3M polishing um, things. So, you know, not something I particularly need to uh, unbox here on the channel. I've talked about them before with me uh, trying to get mirror polishes on some edges here. I suppose I'll start out with the, uh, the O-Knife metal here. I opted for the orange one. Uh, the other one that they had, I think, was just green and uh, green and black. But uh, this one just kind of had a, uh, a different contrast kind of thing going on that uh, I thought would be a little interesting. So, yeah, this is the button lock, and it's going to be super cold because it just came out the mailbox. And yeah, it's uh, it's pretty nice. We got a nice dip for the uh, the little button lock there. Decent action. I can feel the bearings rolling on there, so not you know the absolute smoothest thing in the in in the known universe. But um, most of the O knives don't quite match uh, what a standard Kaiser does. Uh, there are some that do. Uh, the the freeze two for certain is uh super super smooth but not all of them are here's the uh the challenge coin for it there's metal we got a little i don't know curved beak thing it's not a stork maybe an egret i don't know and that looks like a uh a calla lily or uh you know basically the uh lily the death flower but <laughs> yeah it's a it's a pretty decent little um edc size uh, we basically have flat scales here. Not a huge amount of contouring. Uh, I mean, they, they come in a little bit. And uh, I'm guessing Azo didn't really have a whole lot to do with this design because the liners are not proud of the scales. Thank you for that. That's uh, That makes me happy. I don't really feel any uh, lock rock or anything like that. Nice and solid in there. We got... Uh, Black liners with some holes, so that's great. This one uh, should be using one, yeah, 154 cm. Uh, I don't think them or Kaiser have really used uh, N690 for much recently, and uh, yeah, that's perfectly fine with me. I do prefer 154 cm over N690, which I kind of uh, equate to kind of a fancy 440c or something like that. It's an all right steel, but not super, super duper amazing. Yeah, this one's basically flipper release only. Uh, you have just enough room to get some friction, but not enough to actually uh, get it out if you wanted to uh, try to do an index look. Oh yeah, if I didn't mention it before. Yep, I uh, just got back from a Christmas uh, company Christmas party, so I got uh, some festive nails. But, uh, all right, let's go ahead and move that aside. This is, uh, yeah, it's just going to be an i3. Nothing super special, but it is Christmassy, so that's nice. And I think it was all of a dollar because I ordered the knife. Uh, let's see. Next up, I want to go for the petrified fish here. I don't quite remember which one this is now. Uh, it does take a while for their new models because uh, they do come in from... Um, China. Oh, okay. This is the, uh, the florist, but uh, I think it's the florist S or D or <laughs> whatever the. It's not going to say anywhere in it. Uh, but yeah, this is the florist, but it doesn't have the, uh, the sheep's foot. It's got a little bit more of a spear point. So yeah, I think it's the florist S. But uh, yeah, it looked like a pretty interesting knife. I kind of like the uh, little copper and uh, brass mosaic thing going on there. Um, I don't know if that goes all the way through or not. It's super nice and flush, so that's good. It's a little tiny bit smaller 
than I thought it was going to be, but I can still get all four of my fingers around there. They've done this on a few where it's nice and contoured there, so uh, you can really choke up a bit. Uh, the jimping on it's a little bit further back than uh, would be comfortable for me in a choked up position, but that's all right. A lot of times I will end up using a pinch grip for stuff like that anyway. Kind of thick for the blade stock for it uh, overall, but that's all right. Really nice blade geometry going on there. They always hide the ever-loving crap out of their blade steel on these guys. K110 in this particular case here. Yeah, this thing will end up dropping closed uh, once I uh, kind of tune out the pivot and get my own oil in there. But for the moment, it's uh, just a little tiny bit of a wiggle shut. We got a microfiber cloth. This one's um, green and uh, very different texture than I've seen before. Uh, I did get a sticker in here. Okay, cool. Uh, I did get extra hardware pieces. A little packet of snacks. And sticker. Yep, that's their standard one. The uh, the back print looked a little bit different, so I just wanted to uh, kind of take a closer look at that. But uh, all right, so yeah, there's the uh, Florist S. Really fun little uh, front flipper. Like I said, the original version of that is um, more of a uh, sheep's foot kind of look to it. But uh, that one seemed to interest me a little bit more. All right, it's Trevisa time. And this is a Gemini. This one looked super, super cool. So I wanted to uh, give it a shot. But uh, by the time the, uh, the first set of them uh, came out, they disappeared immensely fast. Uh, let's see. Is there a slip on this? Yeah, there is. Go. The oh, man. I want in. <laughs> oh, this is going to be fun. I don't want to cut it off, but... Uh, you know, I am slightly tempted to. I wonder if I try to go the other way here. Eh, I had better luck that way. For the most part, geez. All right, yeah, a little magnetic box going on here. Foam up top. Got a little leather slip for it. Which the knife is not in, which is probably good. Got a little bit of their information there. A little tag. Microfiber cloth. And finally, we've made it to the knife. And... Yeah, a lot of people are going to lose interest because uh, this is a slip joint. <laughs> but, uh, yeah... Really wanted to uh, get a good look at this guy here. It's uh, it's pretty interesting. We got M390 blade steel on this guy. It's not really stamped on there, but it's going to have the uh, pro probably the information. Well, that's a QC thing. Uh, it's probably somewhere. But we got M390 blade steel. We have um, what's supposed to be titanium here. Of course, we're going to have a, a steel backspacer. Uh, otherwise, the uh, spring doesn't really work all that much. Not a crazy, crazy strong spring there. We do have a, uh, a stop pin that uh, will hit in that little choil there. So you can't uh, squeeze that and have it hit that backspacer there. We got nicely polished desert ironwood. And uh, it looks pretty good. I got just a little bit of a... A little scuffy part there, which, yeah, it doesn't bother me all that much. And, uh, yeah, this got basically a bolster going on for it. Kind of a uh, Texas toothpick-style blade going on there. Um, obviously, we have a little bit more belly going on towards the tip, so not quite the same. But, uh, yeah, still really, really wanted to check this thing out. 
Now, obviously, that's a uh, machine, but it does look like a, a decent uh, facsimile of uh, file work going on there. Kind of looks like some bones all lined up. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's uh, super neat. As I said, also comes with a little uh, leather pocket uh, slip sort of thing. Uh, just a single carry style there with the, uh, the belt loop thing on it. Let's see, as far as the blade... Yeah, that has really, really thin geometry. Still kind of thick up at the spine. Uh, tend to see that uh, a little bit more from uh, most uh, Chinese companies. We, Civivi, uh, are usually um, kind of absent from that list, but most of them do err on the uh, thicker side. But, uh, all right, let's go ahead and uh, set that aside. And I want to take a look at this guy here. Now this one's, I knew it was going to be heavy, and yes, yes, it is. Um, yeah, this has a stainless steel handle for it. No ifs, ands, or buts. They're not lying about it trying to be a carbon fiber or anything like that. Interesting kind of uh, access lock style to it. We got some nice action going on on it, so that's pretty good. We got this uh, Damascus blade here. Uh, it's They claim it's VG10, so uh, yeah, hopefully that's going to be true. We got a uh, folded over pocket clip, which, uh, well, definitely matches it. So, yeah, I'm going to assume that that's steel as well. Looks like we got T6 hardware around, except for the pivot, though. That's a little annoying, but uh, not unheard of. This does look to be kind of the uh, the older style of um, Damascus cladding, where you can actually see the um, the uh, the coarse steel right there in the center. It's easier to uh, actually determine that it's a a particular coarse steel rather than um, you know someone doing something crazy like just doing a, a laser etch on here. So these are the actual layers and stuff like that. But uh, nice. Nice, comfortable uh, knife. It's, uh, like I said, it's very heavy. And the, uh, the crossbar lock there. I wonder if that's brass all the way through. If so, that might not be the, uh, the absolute epitome of um, longevity. Because uh, an access bar does uh receive just a little bit of uh, abuse and stuff like that over time we got uh carbon fiber inlays here not absolutely flush but hey what are you gonna do this thing was not an expensive knife it was probably around the neighborhood of uh 60 65 when i purchased it somewhere right around there but yeah we got a little uh color that definitely looks like uh, colored aluminum. I don't think that's... Uh... Yeah, that, that's definitely not brass or bronze. But, uh, yeah, the uh, the backspacers uh, certainly look to be... Yeah, it's fairly interesting overall. All right, let's see. Now that... Uh... Everything's in disarray. I wanted to make sure that I didn't miss anything, but uh, cool. So I got the uh, the O knife metal, which uh, not too bad so far. Uh, I haven't, um, you know, obviously played around with it much. Just uh, kind of open that up. Um, it does have their uh, their textured G10 going right down on the clip, so uh, that'll take a little while to uh, wear down and. Probably take a uh, pant pocket or something like that with it on the way down. But uh, it's definitely no different than um, <laughs> you know, almost all Spydercos that uh, actually use the peel ply G10 texture and stuff like that. Nice blade shape, like that. Decent action. Then we got the uh, Petrified Fish flavorist S with the uh, more of a spear point blade going on there. Still with the blue micarta. It is decently um, contoured and of course I do like uh, 
uh, nested liner locks quite a bit. And this one does, even though it doesn't quite look like it, it would help if I actually got any of this in frame. Uh, sorry about that. Um, yeah, we do have a, a decent amount of uh, lock bar access there. And the jimping goes all the way around. So, you know, if that's something that uh, tickles your fancy, well, there you go. I actually did that one in a decent way. Yeah, there's the Trevisa Gemini, or Gemini 01. And, yeah, this is uh, the Massalong. Uh, I think it's the MA256 is the... Uh, the name that I have for that on Amazon, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll have to, uh, have the final verdict on that down in the description. I guess also I'll get a little Olight patch, patcherino thing, an e, I3E, three e EOS. Uh, yeah, that looks like it. All right, well. That was uh, fun. I suppose I shall do a little bit of uh, sharpness testing on these guys and then uh, get back to work. So, uh, all right. I appreciate y'all for watching and have yourself a wonderful rest of your day. Oh, it's this guy.